everybody, welcome back to my channel today. We are going to be talking about the Essie Silk Water Collection. And if you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. I hope that you stick around for a little while. Basically, to sum up my channel, it's all about nail polish here and it's all about live application. I really feel like that helps you get a sense for the polish better than just seeing a swatched photo of it. So, yesterday I'm going to be swatching all of the nine polishes in the Essie Silk Watercolor Collection. One polish is a white cream base that kind of gives you your um, blank canvas to be able to do your watercolor painting on top of, and then the other eight are three coaters. They're all at least three coaters if you want to wear them alone. Um, they give you this gorgeous squishy jelly finish, really, really high glossy um, finish at the three coats, but they most certainly all need at least three coats if you're going to wear them on their own. Um, so I will show you them that way. And actually, a lot of the darker color co colors in this collection, I really do like them on their own. Um, just to wear all over the whole hand as your manicure. Um, and then I will also be showing you a demo of how I use these for their watercolor purposes. I tried to... I watched a few of the Essie's, like a few of on Essie's actual YouTube, um, like the ways that they are using it. And so I kind of looked at that and then I wanted to look for a different way that I could use these. So I'm not showing you the exact same thing. So I tried one of the techniques that they showed there and then I tried to show you a few different things. So I do want to say right off the bat, um, I will certainly be keeping these. I'm not going to list them on my store envy because I really liked at least one of the ways that I could use these for watercolor designs on my nails. I really do enjoy nail art. I'm not able to do it as much as I would like to because I'm constantly swatching collections, but if you are a nail art enthusiast, these are really fun because what you can't get with an opaque cream, you can get with these because you can get the blended colors and just that really nice um, squishy artistic look on the nail, most certainly. Um, but I did notice while I was playing around with these, I don't have the shortest nails on the face of the planet, but right now they are short. They just barely go to the tip of my nail. So if you have short nails, um, if you have little nails, um, just, I think nails in general, it's a very small canvas to work on. So the concept of this um, collection is that you can create this watercolor design on your nail but in reality as I was testing these out I found that it's actually kind of tricky to get these to do a real nice watercolor effect on such a small canvas if you're used to nail art you're used to really trying hard to fit your design if you if you're doing anything other than like you know if you're doing something that's not just geometrical where it can just be lines on your nail, if you're really trying to fit a design that is a recognizable shape or something like that, it's pretty hard to get it onto the space of your nail. So the only way to do it is to take a very fine detail brush and just go with very fine small lines. But if you're doing watercolor, that kind of, it kind of defeats the point of the watercolor design because the watercolor design, if you look at these gorgeous images of watercolor paintings, they use a lot of space to be able to really show the depth and dimension and um, blending of all these colors. So I think that's best showcased on a big canvas. Well, our nails are very small. So um, anyway, that was my experience with this. I feel like, you know, Essie is not the first brand to come out with this kind of um, sheer kind of watercolor-esque idea, you know, like the OPI sheer tents, things like that. Um, it's kind of the same idea, um, but specifically because these are called silk watercolors, the way that I tried to use them was the like if you were actually going to do watercolor painting. So most certainly you could use these for like jelly sandwiches. You could certainly use them for that. Um, but the demo that I'm going to show you are for three specifically watercolor-esque designs that you could do with these. So 
Anyway, we're going to go through all of the polishes and then I will give you a demo at the end of, you know, kind of my experience with um, the, using them as watercolors. I did have some designs that were definitely fails and some that I felt like were a little bit more successful and one design in particular that I really felt like was the most enjoyable to me and that I'll certainly be, um, you know, repeating that type of technique on my nails using these polishes. So, um, I know that was a lot of talking up front, but we're going to go ahead and get into the live application right now. On my lips is a Lilac from L'Oreal and it is in the shade Lacky You. So that's what that is. Okay, so first off, let's look at the white. I actually really liked this white from Essie. So I'm happy that they didn't give us like a yucky streaky white. It's called White Page and it's great. It's great at two coats to give you a nice opaque canvas for these watercolors. So let me just show you how it applies on its own real quick. Let's get started looking at the rainbow of colors here that Essie has given us to work with in their Silk Watercolors collection. First up, the basic red is called Blush Stroke. And as you can see here, it's a very cherry red. So let's see how this one applies. We're just going to kind of run through these real quick because, like I said, the formula is all the same on all of these. You need three coats if you're going to wear them alone at least. Um, and then I think most of what you're going to want to look at is at the end, like how I used it in practical application. So there's another red, and I actually really liked this one. It's nice and deep. It's called Highest Bitter. gave us an orange. This actually looks very similar to the red to me. It's called Art New Bow. Here it is here.
have this lovely yellow jelly here called Muse Myself. Here's the yellow. All right, the green in this collection takes um, kind of an interesting form here. It's called Pen and Inky, and it's this kind of deep blue-green color. There is a blue in this collection. It's a nice deep blue called Point of Blue, kind of a royal blue there. Purple is also nice and deep. It's called No Shrinking Violet. And then they also gave us a pink and it's called Love Sheen.
how each of these look on their own, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my footage of my, you know, trying to paint with these on my nails and um, we're going to do a little voiceover action here and I'll talk you through what I'm doing, what my experience was, things like that. Hey guys, so like I said, um, I'm going to be trying out three different techniques for you. I actually did see this one on the um, YouTube video that was sponsored by Essie, so I wanted to give it a try and see how easy it was. Basically, I just took the blue shade and I um, formed these pretty easy petal shapes here. And then I'm going to pick up the green and kind of go over them. So what this technique demonstrates is that, you know, with a really kind of easy form, like not very specific form, you can get this nice look of, you know, a watercolor flower. Basically, we're just going to use three polishes and, um, you know, you can kind of figure out what it is without being too specifically detailed. So this is me going in with the, um, the deeper red, the highest bitter shade. And um, so, yeah, just going to kind of give it a few layers of color and um, some dimension. And this was a pretty easy technique. I, I liked it. I didn't enjoy it as much as the third one I'm going to show you, but this was easy. So top coating here, and then we're going to move on to the second technique. All right, the second technique I did, I wanted to kind of explore maybe using a little bit more color, um, you know, seeing how easy it was to really get a nice watercolor look on the nail. Um, I googled some images and I saw an image of a butterfly with a bunch of different colors kind of um, melding together in the watercolor. So this is what I'm trying to do on this nail. I have to say um, I didn't love this technique because like I explained before our nail bed is such a small canvas it's really hard to um, kind of get the desired appearance in my opinion of what you're going for in a watercolor in such a small space if you're not giving it a lot of definition. However, you know, I want you to see what my experience was like, so <laughs> this is what happened. So as you can see, I went in with the yellow as my base for the for the butterfly's wings, and now I'm going in with the orange, and I'm just kind of like adding a little bit of color here and there. Again, I did, um, you know, I'm, I am referencing an image that I looked up. I just typed in watercolor. Um, on Google and then I found an image of a butterfly. So I am referencing that image. Um, I'm not, with watercolor you can't really copy exactly what you see because you know it is just a blending of colors. Um, so I'm just kind of dropping some colors here and there. I noticed that they used maybe four or five colors um, in the butterfly. So that's what I'm doing. So I did some orange there. Now I'm going in with the purple. I think it's called No Shrinking Violet, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going in with the purple here starting to blend a little bit, making some of it look a little brown, um, but you know, that's what happens when we add multiple colors together. Alright, now I'm just adding some green, just trying to kind of fill it out here get you a good idea of, you know, how these work when they touch each other. And then because I wasn't, really wasn't satisfied with how it looked, I thought it would be nice to just take a pink and do like a pink overlay over all the colors. And, um, yeah, that kind of finished it out for me. I, I liked that. But as you can see, if you're looking at that, you could, you could really think that's a, you know, many different things. <laughs> So I'm going in with um, some black acrylic paint. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, whenever you do detail work, it's so much easier if you use acrylic paint because you can thin it out with water and it's just way easier to work with. It doesn't get tacky as fast. So I'm just adding a little body to the butterfly so that it's easier to tell what it is. So this is kind of like my second step or my second trial with this um, watercolor experience, adding a little bit more um, definition to, you know, whatever the article it is I'm trying to paint. So I'm going to add in these tiny little 
feelers here. Um, really, I was starting to get a little bit shaky at this point, so it's not it's not super precise or nice as you're gonna see right here. But it's just kind of giving you an idea. So, yes, this is what you'd do if you wanted to add just a little bit more um, definition. And we're gonna top coat it. And that's what my second experience was like using these watercolor paints. Alright, my third design I actually liked the best, and I think it's because I used the most outlining work. So I wanted to show you three different kind of designs because you may not really be interested in doing any outlining work. It does take extra time, it takes a steady hand, um, but I think that the finished result, just in my, for my aesthetic, I think the finished result is nicer when you have um, some nice black line around your work. But that's my opinion. So, um, as you saw in the beginning, the first one was absolutely no detail work. The second one was a little tiny bit of detail work. And, you know, if I would have added some more outlining to those butterfly wings, maybe I would have liked it a little bit better. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm going for different kinds of looks so that you can, you know, see <laughs> what effort you'd have to put in. So this third one, I'm going in kind of the same as the butterfly. I'm adding lots of different colors. Again, I'm going off a reference image that I saw on Google. Again, I had just typed in watercolor, and this picture of a flower came up, and of course it was on a way bigger canvas, so I'm trying to scale it way down here. But um, it was just all these different colors blending together. So that's what I'm trying to create here first. This is the base, and I'm putting all the different colors I want on there first, and then you go ahead and let them kind of squish together, and then you let it dry. Once it's dry, you're going to go in with your acrylic paint again. I guess that's what I'm getting right now. <laughs> so you're going to go ahead and get your acrylic paint, water it down whenever you're doing detail work, you're going to water down your acrylic paint. And then using your whatever detail brush you want to use, um, you're just going to create these lines. Now, like I said before, I'm not replicating exactly the picture that I saw on my Google search because it was way bigger, I couldn't fit in as many lines, but this did not come out of the top of my head. I am referencing a picture. I just want to be clear about that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going in here and outlining the flower, and I'm not really going to kind of go in any order. I'm just looking at the picture and being like, oh yeah, there's a line there. And then, you know, by the end, it comes out to look like a flower, at least I thought it kind of did. <laughs> you may look at it and be like, what? But, um, so this ended up being my favorite technique. I liked the way I could use, um, you know, a lot of different colors. They blended together. And then once it's dry over top of it, you can add the definition. So you've got like the juxtaposition of the, um, kind of, I don't know, what's the word? <laughs> There's like the scattered blending of that color, like how it's not super uniform, it's not super designed, it kind of just happened. What's the word for that? It's just like a spontaneous combustion of color together on the bottom. I think that's a nice thing about watercolor, where you kind of just let the paint do what it's going to do. So, um, and then you go on top and add a little bit of definition so that you're not just like, okay, what is the blob? of paint on my nails. <laughs> that was kind of how I was feeling when I was working with these paints. A couple of the designs I throwed out, I throwed out, I threw out and didn't include in this um, this demo here were just because I was like, wow, you really can't tell what I'm trying to do here. It looks like blobs on the nail. And for me, that's just not aesthetically pleasing. So um, yeah, those ones kind of hit the drawing room floor. But this one I thought was something that was, you know, a little bit more doable and then in the end you have a result that you can be like, oh, I can actually see what that is. Now again, these are going to be hard to get a, you know, very good detailed design with. My detail work is being done with the acrylic paint because the watercolor is meant to do that. It's meant to just squish around and, you know, kind of do its own thing. So. As long as you go into it knowing that that's going to be your experience, I actually kind of liked it. So by the time I was done playing around with this final technique, I was like, okay, I can, I can get on board with this. I think my first one where I added absolutely no detail 
I really liked that one. But again, I tried that with a few other designs and anything else but floral, it was really hard to tell what kind of image I was making on as small of a space as your nail is. So um, for me, you know, if I was going to try anything else besides floral, I would definitely have to use some acrylic paint to define the line work and kind of give it a good clear outline so that I'm not just staring down at blobs of paint on my hand. So I hope this is helpful to anyone who is wondering, you know, what is the practical application that I could really use these for? Because I watched I watched the video that Essie had online. The um, you know, they're she's not the graphical designer. She's she's I'm not sure. I can't remember what her title is, but she she talks about um, you know how she helped design these and things like that and some of the designs I thought you know that's okay but I don't really know if I'd I'd want to really use that technique so it took a little while of just playing around with them so if you really enjoy nail art um, you know I would suggest probably picking up a few of these because it is definitely a look that you can't get with your regular paints so here we are top coating I hope you didn't mind all my chatting just now, um, but I just kind of wanted to talk you through my process. And then with that glossy top coat, I just I think it I think it looks nice. Of course, I'm, I didn't firm up the edges here and clean up the black around my nail, but sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna zoom out and show you the three designs together. Again, the middle one there's the one I did first where you can kind of just tell their petals. I could have taken, you know, maybe a little bit of green and thrown in some stems and leaves if I wanted to. But that's what your outline work is for. And I, again, I would suggest doing that with acrylic paint. So, yeah, I thought it was fun. And at the end, like I said, I actually really decided that I enjoyed the whole collection. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. But... And you could probably get away with not having to purchase all of them and you could just mix your colors. That's another thing that you could go ahead and give a try. So yes, we're going to get back out of this voiceover. Okay, so I hope that you found that helpful. Um, I hope that you found something here that you liked perhaps. I really, when I set out to purchase these, I kind of hemmed and hawed over for a little bit because I thought I really don't know if I'm gonna like those enough to make it be worth picking up the whole collection. But after playing with these and actually finding that half of them at least were um, colors that I thought were really gorgeous on the nail just by themselves, and then finding a technique for the watercolor that I really did enjoy, I was really actually very glad that I picked these up. These might not be your cup of tea. If not, that is perfectly fine. We all like different things, but I just wanted to show it to you today so that you could see what these are like and give you a good idea if this is something that you wanted to invest in, especially if you are um, really into nail art. So, hope you're having a really great day. Um, don't forget to check out my OPI collection for the Venice Fall 2015 release that I put up the other day, and we have lots more reviews coming this week. The Great Outdoors collection from China Glaze, the Misa Summer 2015 collection, some polishes from Pretty Serious Cosmetics, and from um, some polishes from the Color Prevalis collection that you can find at Walgreens. This video was requested. You guys wanted to know what these were like, so I went ahead and tested some out. Um, that's it for today. Thanks for coming to hang out with me a little bit. If you are new, please subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I will see you back next time. Bye!